Hello everyone and welcome to our video on summarizing narrative texts. Before we get started, let's make sure you have your notebook set up correctly. You should have your video visa on the left side ready to go so that you can reflect on this after you watch the video and the right side should have your note taker ready to write your notes. Make sure you're following along with the video to write your notes so that you get everything down accurately and pause to give you time to write. Um, since you are pausing to write and all of that, I do suggest that you rewatch the video at least once just to make sure that there's nothing you missed and that you got everything down correctly. So we are talking about summarizing narrative texts. Um, I'm going to give you a specific strategy called the somebody wanted but so then theme strategy um, to use and that's what you're going to write down and then we're going to practice with a familiar story to give you an example of what the strategy looks like in action. So first let's talk about what summarizing narrative text means. This is when you reduce an entire story or large sections of it to just its most important events and details. Um, sometimes you're going to need to summarize the entire text. Sometimes it might ask you to just summarize, let's say paragraphs five through eight or pages two to seven. Um, sometimes you want to summarize the whole thing, sometimes parts of it. That's why I included both of those in the definition. Remember that a summary means it's going to be shorter, much shorter than the entire text uh, because you're just putting the most important events and details. Also keep in mind that a narrative text is a text that tells a story. Okay, it has a sequence, it has usually a plot, um, characters, problem, solution, all of that. So it's important to know all of those things when we're talking about summarizing narrative texts. So now let's get to the strategy. Somebody wanted but so then theme. Okay, you'll notice I even put a little reminder there with the hand um, and, and I'll get to that at the end to tell you why I like using the hand for this strategy. So first let's start with just defining, like what do these terms mean? So when I say somebody, I'm just talking about the main character of the story. Who does the story revolve around? Wanted is basically like it says, what the main character wants. This drives the story, the, what their desires, something that they're trying to achieve or get is what gives us the action. Everything else happens because of what they want. But this is what is preventing them from getting what they want, the obstacle or problem. This also drives the story because this is gonna drive them to try something new in order to achieve what they want. So both of those are kind of what drive the plot of the story. So is what they do to try to solve the problem and get what they want to reach their goal at the end. Then is just the conclusion to the story. How does it end? And the theme is what the main character learns, the lesson taught, the message the author is trying to give the reader, a big idea that applies to real life. Sometimes the theme is connected to the conclusion of the story, the then part, but not always. That's why I left it as a whole separate part of the strategy because it doesn't always wrap up nicely with a theme at the end. And this is something you have to infer based on everything else that happened in the text. And that's why I included it separately. Now, make sure you have all those written down, but let me talk about the little hand really quick. So if you'll notice I have the hand and I have one part of the strategy on each finger, and then I have theme kind of in the palm of your hand. So that's what helps me remember. Somebody on the thumb wanted, but so then when you close them all together, when they all come together, they form the theme. You have to use the entire story to get the theme of the text, to decide what was the, the lesson that was taught, what was the author trying to tell me. That's why I like putting theme right at the palm. Um, you can even close your hand to help you remind you, um, but there's one finger for each part of the story, and then the theme is just the main meat of it. Okay, so this is just something to help you remember what each part uh, means and where it goes. All right, so you should have your note taker complete. It should look something like this. And we have a, a part at the bottom for an example. So let's try it. Remember to pay attention to the plot of the story and see what the most important events are because that's what we're going to be focusing on. As we read, start thinking about which part of the story of the summary we're on. Are we on the somebody wanted but so then or theme? And be ready to write your own summary using the somebody wanted but so then strategy. 
So I chose a very short and hopefully very familiar story, the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So follow along and then you're going to try the summary yourself. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She went for a walk in the forest. Pretty soon she came upon a house. She knocked and when no one answered, she walked right in. At the table in the kitchen, there were three bowls of porridge. Goldilocks was hungry. She tasted the porridge from the first bowl. This porridge is too hot, she exclaimed. So she tasted the porridge from the second bowl. This porridge is too cold, she said. So she tasted the last bowl of porridge. Ah, this porridge is just right, she said happily, and she ate it all up. After she'd eaten the three bears breakfast, she decided she was feeling a little tired. So she walked into the living room where she saw three chairs. Goldilocks sat in the first chair to rest. This chair is too big, she exclaimed. So she sat in the second chair. This chair is too big, too, she whined. So she tried the last and smallest chair. Ah, this chair is just right, she sighed. But just as she settled down into the chair to rest, it broke into pieces. Goldilocks was very tired by this time. She went upstairs to the bedroom. She lay down in the first bed, but it was too hard. Then she lay in the second bed, but it was too soft. Then she lay down in the third bed, and it was just right. Goldilocks fell asleep. As she was sleeping, the three bears came home. Someone's been eating my porridge, growled the papa bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, said the mama bear. Someone's been eating my porridge and they ate it all up, cried the baby bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, growled the papa bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair, said the mama bear. Someone's been sitting in my chair and they've broken it to pieces, cried the baby bear. They decided to look around some more and when they got upstairs to the bedroom, papa bear growled. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, too, said the mama bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, and she's still there, exclaimed the baby bear. Just then, Goldilocks woke up. She saw the three bears. She screamed, help, and she jumped up and ran out of the room. Goldilocks ran down the stairs, opened the door, and ran away into the forest. She never returned to the home of the three bears. So now pause the video here, please, and give it a try. Try doing the somebody wanted but so then strategy. If you need to, go back a little bit in the video so that you can see the story and refer to it as you're writing and then come back to this part when you're done so you can see my example and let's see how yours matched up to mine. All right, so if you are here, that means you already wrote your summary and you're ready to see mine. So somebody is Goldilocks, she's the main character. She wanted to eat and rest in the bear family's cabin after a walk in the woods. But when she tried Mama and Papa Bear's porridge, chair, and bed, they were not right for her. So she tried Baby Bear's things, and they were all just right. Then Goldilocks fell asleep in Baby Bear's bed and was discovered by the family when they got back home, and she got scared away. Goldilocks learn not to take things that don't belong to you. This is one of those themes that was inferred. It didn't straight up say it in the story. There's many themes in the story. I can probably think of a few others and you guys might have thought of a few other themes um, and that's okay. The rest of your summary should be pretty similar to mine because those were the main events that happened in the text, right? Her trying each of their porridge, the bed, the chair, getting discovered at the end, running away. All of those are the important events. And this just gives you a way to frame it, gives you a way to think through those events in case you get stuck. But we're not done. After this, after you write this part on the strategy, we have to put it together into a paragraph that makes sense. Normally, I like to put the somebody wanted and but together in a sentence. So by itself, then by itself, theme by itself. However, depending on the story, depending on the length of each, sometimes you might want to put somebody and wanted together and then the rest all on their own. Sometimes then and theme need to go together and the rest grouped. However, you just have to see how it makes sense. You don't want a bunch of run on sentences that just go on and on and on, but you also don't want it to sound too choppy. So um, one thing I always say to do is to read your text aloud to yourself. Read it aloud and see how it sounds and then make adjustments if you need to. Here is my summary paragraph. Goldilocks wanted to eat and rest in the bear family's cabin after a walk in the woods. But when she tried when she tried Mama and Papa Bear's porridge, chair, and bed, they were not right for her. So she tried Baby Bear's things and they were all just right. Then Goldilocks fell asleep in Baby Bear's bed and was discovered by the family when they got back home and she got scared away. Goldilocks learned not to take things that don't belong to you. 
your summary paragraph should sound something like this. Like I said, play around with how the, the sentences sound, but it's important to also remember that the summary should follow the order of events that the story has. So the same order that it happened in the story, it should happen in your summary as well. Um, now that you got a little bit of practice, you should have your note taker filled up. Remember that your visa also needs to be completed and that you need to post your part A of that visa in Google Classroom or wherever else your teacher has asked you to do it and be ready to discuss the video and apply the skill yourself to a different text. Um, it's important that you keep practicing this skill. Nothing comes easy necessarily the first time, so it takes maybe a couple of tries to practice before you get the hang of it. Um, so don't be scared. Don't be afraid to, to get it wrong. We're all learning and it just it's going to take a little practice and application for you to get it right.